Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, <laughs> and I'm huffing and puffing. You know, I was antsy pantsy this morning. I'm always antsy pantsy, uh, but I'm here at 8:27. The store doesn't open until nine o'clock, but I keep looking because uh, sometimes they'll open early, like 10, 15 minutes early. And the last time they did that, I got here on time. But they had opened early that day, and when I got in, my nemesis was already here, and her cart was filled with all the good stuff. So now I, I get to this particular store early, just in case they open the doors early. Don't get to the store 15 minutes early anymore. Just start when you're in the store. But I have to sit here and talk to you for just a couple of minutes. I have a banana. If you're, if you're new to the old curiosity shop, and some of you are, uh, I have been fiddling with antiques since I was a teenager, a few years ago, and I love antiques and old things, and so my passion is the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, and that's what I look for, and that's what I love to buy, collect, and sell. I'll go all the way back into the Victorian era, and I dip into the 1950s, 60s, and sometimes the 70s, Beyond that, forget it. So sometimes people get frustrated. They say, I can't believe you just walked by, fill in the blank, and if it's a new item, it just doesn't do it for me. It's not about money, because there's lots of things you can buy and sell that are new that have lots of value, and uh, I have no interest at all. So maybe that will help you understand when you see me walk by really uh, new piece of expensive glass I'm happy to leave it on the shelf for someone else to discover because I really only buy and sell the antique and and the, the vintage items oh what is that no that's okay all right <laughs> I'll be quiet now when we return we're gonna be inside the thrift shop Today's my big day, 10 stores in one day. I'll be going strong from now until probably 5 o'clock tonight. And I'll try to do a little bit of filming and show you some of the things that I've managed to find. I am on the lookout for this, for this percolator top. Yep. So I got aggressive and broke it. Um, that's not showing up. There is a big hunk out of it right there. It will still fit in the percolator. It will. There's a little knob that sticks out. It's, remember the light bulbs you would push in and twist and they hold in place? That's the way these percolator tops work. And this is a glass one from uh, the 1930s, but I'll be able to find one eventually. Okay, I've got about 15 more minutes. I'm gonna eat my banana. Listen to something on the radio, and then we'll see you inside. Thanks for listening to me go blah, 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 blah. Now let's go shopping. Look at these. <laughs> that is so mid-century, but there's no way I would ship it. I'm going to take a look at the prices. This might be something I can take to a flea market. Wow, they're huge. It looks like it's, you know, right off the set of Bewitched or something like that. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here I am in the uh, dish aisle. Let me shop really fast and then I'll go back over it a little bit slower. Well, everyone, the 1960s Harlequins, I guess that's what they are, um, it's $24 for the pair. So, no, I'm not going to buy them. It, they're fun to look at. It's something that I could sell at a flea market, and there's profit in it. Uh, but I'm going to leave these here. I just thought you'd get a kick out of seeing them. They're in really good condition. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's see what else we can find. 
Is there a Maxfield Parish print hiding around here somewhere? If there is, I'm gonna find it. Oh, not today. Lots of nice dishes to be seen. That's a pretty pattern right there. It looks English. Let's see. No, it's made in Japan. Look at that. Made in Japan. I'm trying to get a better look at it. There you can see. Recognize that? I think you do. I think I just sold a, a grease pot in this pattern. It should be, um, oh, hold on. Is it baked serve? Wait, I'm trying to find somewhere to put this uh, other bowl I just picked up. Bear with me, folks. I'm juggling here. It's, it's either baked serve or Crooksville. Can't remember. Oh, let's get it out of there. Oh, oven serve, oven serve. Mm -hmm. Homer Lachlan ovens, oven serve. See the H and the L right over top of the S? Homer Lachlan oven serve. Three dollars. So that's their, uh, that matches the uh, grease, grease pot I just, I just bought. Now it looks like it's missing a lid. So, what should we do? There's no lid on it. It's not chipped. Three dollars. Maybe the person who bought the grease pot would like to have this. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll put it in the cart. You can also see there's a piece of Fenton right there that I found. Well, I'll go ahead and show you. There's the Fenton. <clears throat> and this has an English hobnail look to this piece of milk glass. It's on sale. I might buy it. Let's see if it's Westmoreland or Indiana. Or Imperial, rather. It is... Ooh, I'm having a hard time seeing. I think I see the I and the G, so that's going to be a piece of Imperial glass. Which is pretty. And... I think I just spied... Now where did it go? Oh, down here. This is going to be one of those big, big turkey platters. <laughs> which is expensive to ship. But uh, let me turn the camera off and dig it out so we can look at it. Well, there it is. It's a big one. It's a made in Japan piece. Uh, the quality of it isn't that great. There's sort of a mottled look to the glaze on the top. I don't know if you're picking... See that right there? I'm not really happy with the way the glaze looks on the top of this. It's not chipped uh, until I drop it. <laughs> $7.99 Japan. That would be a lot of money to ship. And uh, I do find these from time to time. I think I'm going to pass on it. I, I just have, oh, there is a chip right there. Not bad. There's just something funny about that glaze. It kind of reminds me of uh, the paper mache uh, glaze. You know what I mean? When you put paper mache over a, a balloon and you put that thick glaze on it. 
I do like this. Mm-hmm. How would your ginger snaps look on there? Six bucks. I like it. Am I gonna buy it? Am I putting it down? Am I gonna come back and get it? <laughs> oh, I don't know yet. Let's keep shopping. Boy, there's a lot to be seen today. Oh my goodness, we could just spend hours in this one row, couldn't we? And I've got eight store, I've got ten stores to go to today. So many beautiful things. Big chip right there. Teapots, coffee pots. Mm-mm. Mm. Here's some of the poppy down here. This is a pattern you're familiar with. Those are nice. Made by Hall. We can't see the label, but uh, Hall, H-A-L-L. -L. Maybe we can see it on this one. There we go. And look at this. Hiding down here is another Philby. There it is, Fire King. There's the pie plate. Now that's the pie plate I find quite often with the shallow uh, sides. Little small pie plate there for 99 cents. I can't beat that. They're coming with us, little pie plate. Little Philby. Oh my goodness, what else do we have down here? That's a Pyrex pie plate. Right there. And here's one of those uh, stovetop percolators that do pretty well, made by Pyrex. Let me study this one. Hold on, I'm going to put my cell phone down and take a closer look at this. I have to show you this potty seat or invalids uh, potty. We had one of these in the house when I was growing up, not to use, but it had belonged to an ancestor of mine. And my, whenever guests would come over, especially people from church, this will explain my father's sense of humor. He would bring this out into the living room and open the lid. And of course the, the porcelain potty would be in there and he'd serve potato chips out of it. He would sit back and roar with laughter. He thought it was the most hilarious thing. And the old potty is still in the basement of my mother's house. It belonged to some ancestor of mine. I'll have to ask my mother. But um, the porcelain insert is gone. And of course, uh, I say invalid's potty. Didn't I mean anybody could use it. But it could would sit next to a bed. No indoor plumbing. And of course, it would be... Uh, with the handles on the side make it easier to get up and down, but there it is made of uh, That is beautiful old uh, There's I see some oak. I see some walnut mixed woods $25 it's an oddity and but that <laughs> I, I'm laughing right now because I can see and hear my father Having a grand old time serving potato chips out of that thing. Oh He would he, he loved it All right, well, I just found, again, the only tree in the parking lot. There's a nice Aldi right next to my Goodwill store, so I pulled off to get some lunch. So I'm going to have a Caesar salad. Actually, it's not a Caesar salad. It's a chef salad. And drink some frosty pink sparkling something. I've got some grapes to eat when I get home after I wash them off. And some mixed nuts. All right, I'm going to sit here and enjoy my lunch and listen to Beethoven's Ninth. 
and when I come back I'm going to show you a beautiful antique table that I just bought in that store that said dresses 50% off. Well I'm not looking for a dress and I'm not looking for another job so let's go find some antiques. Well here it is this is the little table that I just bought it dates to roughly the first 30 years of the 20th century, 1900 to as late as 1930, probably made in the early 20s. And it's a small little tilt top table. Um, they used to call these occasional tables and little diminutive furniture like this was popular in the 1920s. And everybody was, well, not everybody. A lot of folks were decorating in the colonial revival <clears throat> style or traditional style and this would have fit right in. Now it's made of solid mahogany, it's got inlay, it's fantastic. What's great about it is the original finish on it doesn't need to be stripped. I'm going to do some restorative work to the finish and undo this bad glue job that we, that we see down here. Someone attempted to repair this, they did it very hastily and not very well. You can see how pretty the grain is on the mahogany, and yes, that sticker says $4. Now this wasn't made by a craftsman. This would have been factory produced, mass produced, again as I said, around 1920. But it's still quality. Look how nice the inlay is. And the inlay that we see around the perimeter, perimeter of the top. I'll show you the underside flip this up. Don't look at my dirty car, please. Okay. Give you a good look at the hardware. It actually says patent pending or patent applied for right there on that latch. I don't know how well you can see that. But the hardware, the uh, style of the piece, the condition of the wood and everything really dates it to, to that period right around 1920 perfect to set up next to a small chair as a little lamp table or tea table or however you'd care to use it. Uh, that is a fantastic find, okay? Let me back off and let you see it a little bit better. All right, well, it's been sitting in Uncle Milton's uh, closet since 1940 something something. Well, it's been used since then, but I don't think it's been used in the last 30 years. So, you ever get one of these old projectors, get yourself some three-in-one oil. And before you fire it away, make sure uh, you see all these little reservoirs here that are painted red. You want to drop a little oil in each one before you fire it up. All right, it's plugged in. The cord is good. And... Uh, Hey, if we blow a fuse, we'll just sit here in the dark. What the hey? Let's see what happens. Holy moly! <laughs> oh yes! Who remembers that sound? Oh, I wish you could smell it! All right, now let's try the lamp. There we go. Action stations. All right, folks, it's a movie night. I'll be back.